I mean, it's just a sweet music town. I mean. Bands in Kalamazoo have all these options of places to go and play and spread out. It can make your dreams come true. So on any given night, there's like a whole different scene happening. And if you want to get into Kalamazoo music, there's everything there, and you could listen to it till the end of time. If you could, you know, there's a lot of bands that come and go, and will continue to do that. But you know, you can get every style of music and really high quality and really talented people in this town. And at the same time, like I said, you can know them and you can sh like be close to them and watch it all happen. Kalamazoo, the mirage of the reflecting river, nurturing cultural activities by the establishment of the Kalamazoo Symphony Orchestra in 1921, along with the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts, founded in 1924, and numerous performing arts groups that have continued to emerge from the area. Opening the country's first permanent outdoor pedestrian shopping mall in 1959, Kalamazoo allows for the creation of a venue that embraces social and communal activities, along with boasting several education institutions like Western Michigan University, Kalamazoo College, and Kalamazoo Valley Community College within its city limits. With the creation of the Gibson Mandolin Guitar Manufacturing Company in 1904, Orville Gibson was able to largely increase his instrument output and continue a strong, innovative musical influence on works in the fine art of instrument building, even experimenting with electric guitars 20 years before their time. Yes, I mean, there's a long history of music in Kalamazoo, and, and people generations and generations back have been fostering this scene around here of so many different kinds of things and and so the thing to me that really sets it apart is the history you know going back to you know the all the indie rock stuff that was, that was making it big in the early 90s which still is but you know the, the, the early 90s had this this really known scene of all these bands that were getting signed and touring and doing all this big stuff and then going back even farther to the folk roots and, and the, the jazz history of the town and, and Gibson guitars Kalamazoo has a lot richer musical history. Uh, Louis Bar and Grill, Count Basie played there. In the 60s, Vic Laval, who had a blues record label in Kalamazoo, Laval Records, was hosting shows in there with B.B. Um, King, Bobby Blue Bland. But if you lived on the south side of the railroad tracks in Kalamazoo, you probably never knew those shows were going on. He hosted shows at the old Water Street Armory with the same artists. So there's a long tradition in this area. And so in, in, on one hand, there's that heritage, but on the, the other hand, there's also the amazing combination of different styles that's all happening in one town and styles that are having their own scenes. And to me, it seems like there's a bunch of different scenes going on in Kalamazoo that all are intertwined and, and, and you know, the lines are blurred. But, you know, it's like if, if you're into rock music, there's a ton of bands playing. If you're into blues, there's a ton of bands. You know, if you're into bluegrass or into Celtic music or, you know, classical. I mean, the School of Music here with the jazz program and the classical brings all these people, people through, plus all the clubs in town that, that people are playing at. And, and uh, there's a lot of depth to it, you know. It's not just one band playing this style. It's a whole bunch of people all doing it, you know. Kalamazoo's roots help to foster a musical culture that promotes growth and development by the collective works of many artists that not only are inspired musically by other individuals, but also by the time-telling relationships. I feel like for now I couldn't be more excited about Kalamazoo in that it's you have a lot of, of, of instrumentalists playing on each other's music and collaboration is what it's all. At least I can speak for the people I produce and engineer and, and kind of go around with is that you have this real wild kind of cross-breeding kind of thing going on with uh, um, a good example of, I wish I had it here, is this guy Grant's album I just made. You have 
pretty much people from five or ten different bands on the album just coming in and they contribute an instrumental track or something. And a year ago that wouldn't have happened, you know. So that's pretty cool that like right now is kind of, I feel like that's all just kind of getting started through what we're doing, at least in this sort of rock, folk, weird music kind of end of things. Uh, yeah, you have this real cool collaboration going on. There's so many reasons for it. I mean, one hand, just personally, musically and artistically, I love playing all these different kinds of music, and there's so many different things I'm interested in. I'm always trying to get involved in more projects, you know, because it's really fulfilling to be able to play a lot of different styles and, and a lot of different kinds of shows, to be able to play a, a, a sit-down, listening room, concert kind of thing, and then go play some crazy bar where you have 200 people dancing, you know. And I, I love being able to do all of that, and I, the more that I play, the more that I learn, you know. The, the, the more shows I play, and the more people I, I, I play with, and the more songs I learn, everything just, you know, feeds into, what, you know, hopefully making me a better musician. So performing is a whole different game in and of itself that you have to learn how to how you want to do you know how you want to approach that kind of thing and, and so I think banter is, is one of those things and, and people take different approaches you know I know people who who write out whole like bits or whatever and then other people who I, like myself I'm, I'm I'm a little bit hit or miss honestly depending on my mood <laughs> and that's it's a bad thing but but it is you know, it's the most honest thing that I can give to people, I suppose. The chrome in steals your eyes, collide with the very air she breathes. This community is, is great because it's only partly about music. You know, music is at the center of a lot of things, but it's it's a it's just the main thing that brings people together and, and and the thing that really binds us together is like the friendships you know knowing them as a person as someone who is you know growing at an earlier point in their musical development makes their music infinitely more valuable than a record someone maybe hands you and says this is good this is huge and great because you already know that if it's going to be in a Best Buy or wherever you know so the fact that you get all this music that you know you directly know the people and as and, and you get to uh, and you get to watch the process happen you know there's even the year that I've I'd say you know two a year and a half ago is when I got really into the Kalamazoo music scene and, and even since then how many people I see, I've seen grow and myself included and all of you know um, and just to yeah yeah to be uh, so close yeah with musicians is just really awesome you know not a lot of the bands that I play with or know are the kind of thing where people just show up and say hi and practice and then play the show and then see you later and leave you know it's like I'm, I'm getting to hang out with my friends so why wouldn't I want to hang out with as many of my friends as I can you know and play as much as I can the community is defined by a group of people who share a common cultural and ethical space where they find similar value among others in local proximity. It is the people of the community that harbor the tendencies and orientations that are set throughout its eccentricity. One of the things I love about it is there doesn't seem to be much bitter competition between bands. It's like the, there seems to be enough gigs and enough uh, you know fans and everything to go around for everybody. The cool thing about about people playing and just playing and just not caring, like students who don't care about the money, you know, and they're just playing because they want to, they want to see what effect it has or what, how they feel after it or like, you know, what, what can be communicated through that, the art of performance. Other people who share that vision or, or like that vision and want to be a part of that vision and then they agree to it and then you, you, you basically, if you have a vision, you take that person or persons and you, you, you suck as much out of them as you can and you, you, you get the other people to get on board and that's pretty much how everything works. Definitely, I'm learning from everybody I'm working with all the time and one of the great benefits of being in the studio with all these 
musicians, especially people that you really hold in high regard and really look up to musically, is you get to be, you know, in their head a little bit. You know, you're working on things with them. You're finding out why take three sounded good to them and take four didn't, you know, and, and, and there's, there's always so much to learn from people and it really has helped me and given me a lot of insight into my own playing. I met Graham a, about a year ago through the strut and he's more of like a was a folk kind of pop songwriter but if you've heard him before he obviously has a really incredible voice and just being a fan of music I'm really into old Motown and soul music and I was just we kind of just started talking like hey we should make some soul music together um, and that was kind of the formulation of what is the go rounds now is that we wrote he and I wrote two co-wrote two soul tracks and then Grant Littler another songwriter I mentioned uh, from town who plays guitar in the go-rounds now wrote a song and then it just kind of became a band. You know the more you're around musicians that that can influence you in a good way the more you're going to soak up. With such a background that favors people to constantly influence and innovate its community, Kalamazoo has allowed for the unity in perceptions and for the discern in differences in groups which only leaves room for its individuals to share in the breaths of an air of inspiration that is somewhat random but is a wholly natural association of ideas that have a unison in thought. My friends and the people I play with are also introducing me to all kinds of new ideas and stuff I can do. And so I love that, going, going to see my friends and, and, and bands that aren't my friends or that I hope will be my friends someday, <laughs> going, going to go see them and, and, and hear what they're doing and then be able to in, interpret you know, and be influenced by that sort of thing too. Uh, like the people I work with I'm really inspired by. Uh, I, uh... Right now I'm working with a uh, songwriter named Fiona Dickinson, uh, a guy named Graham Parsons. Musicians in this community, they're constantly inspiring me and I know you too. And last, last winter when I saw Fiona Dickinson play for the first time, again I had to reevaluate why I'm doing what I'm doing and, and uh, take on a more serious edge to what I'm doing. And it's people like her that inspired me to keep progressing, keep working hard, because I know that in the end, what will come of that is only good things. It's never hard for me to leave a town. I've done it before. What I like about it is that I'm constantly in conversation with like minded musicians. So we're all kind of progressing together, and that's pretty cool. Um, I, why, I mean, I think why it appeals to people and why I'll be here for a while is because, like, I mean, in the end, I think what most musicians or creative people want to do is be able to be creative every day. And whether they're in L.A. doing it or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Maybe some people want to get famous, but most people, I think, just want to be creative and work on their craft. And what Kalamazoo, I mean, what I can do and what other musicians in Kalamazoo, we can do that on a small scale and at the end of, you know, the day that's really valuable and that creates a good life, you know, um, that I know that for as long as, the, you know, I'll be around Kalamazoo, I can live a life that is guided not by my job or, you know, any number of other things, but it's guided by music, and that's pretty cool. So that's, I mean, I couldn't really ask for anything more as a, as a musician. I, I can uh, I can produce one day, the next day I might engineer, I might run live sound, or I might just watch a band, but every day I can, it all has to do with, you know, the bigger musical picture of what I'm trying to do with, you know, my life, and that's incredible, so. I love this city, I love it all my life.
out into the streets With a soul you'll never know And with a look you'll never see Walk the boulevard 